Hello and welcome to Personal Financial Planning. So this course is going to cover introduction about personal financial planning. So it's an introductory course. So in this video series, we are going to do a book review. So we'll go through each chapter and important aspects of it. So the book I am using is Personal Finance by Kapoor, Stephenson and Ponting. So it's a McGraw-Hill publication. So chapter one is introduction to the concept of financial planning. So let's go over it. So what is personal financial planning? It is a process of managing your money to achieve personal economic satisfaction. So it is it is analyzing where you are in your life in terms of your finances, what you want in your life in terms of your financial goals and the process of getting from where you are to where you want to be in life. For example, my goal in life may be to get married in few years. Now marriage is a big decision in terms of life situation, my life kind of situation would change. There are few certain adjustments that I would have to make with, res with regards to my life as well as my spending patterns would change as well as it will have some financial obligations in terms of getting married. So financial planning is a process of planning for all of that. Advantage of personal financial planning before going through the textual stuff, it is as simple as that. If you fail to plan, you're planning to fail. Okay. So advantages of personal financial planning, increased effectiveness in obtaining, using and protecting your financial assets, resources through your lifetime. So what are financial resources? Financial resources is where you get your money from. So you can get your money from your work. It, you can get your money from business. You can get your money from investments. For example, I'm working as an instructor, as a professor. So I have a steady source of income from that. So that is my financial resource. I may have a business, right? Like a restaurant. So from the restaurant, I'm getting certain financial resource as well as I would have certain investments that I would have made. So those investments would be giving me certain financial resources or returns. So it is protecting your resources, obtaining them and using them. So obtaining that is where you get it from using them. So you can use your financial resources for your current needs, wants, as well as planning your investments. So needs would be my basic living conditions like buying groceries or paying my credit card bills, etc. Wants would be something I, I aspire to buy, let's say an iWatch 3, an Apple iWatch 3 or iWatch 4. And my, so it is need, wants and investment. So achieving needs and wants that are in future that are not current, I would plan my investments to achieve them. And it is throughout your lifetime. So it's a process. It doesn't end. So it has to be reviewed yearly. So it's a process. It increases control of your financial affairs by avoiding excess de excessive debt, bankruptcy and dependence on others for economic security. So excessive debt, what is problem with that? So you should spend only what you have. So you have to live within your means, but with a lot of credit cards and a lot of offers and a lot of impulsive buying, people generally don't follow this rule. So currently we are in a situation where we are spending much more than what we get. And how do we do that? By taking on debt, by taking on loans. So credit cards, personal loans, education loans, housing loans, all this is considered as debt. So debt is not wrong, but excessive debt is wrong. So if you are not able to pay off that debt, that is a problem. Bankruptcy is where you can restructure your debt or you can wave off certain part of your debt. Bankruptcy is a very negative, it's considered to be very negative 
and it, it means it reduces your credit worthiness in future it has a lot of financial hazards with it and the bankruptcy rate is also increasing so current bankruptcy rate is around 130,000 individuals per year that are filing for bankruptcy and it has increased a lot over the years and no one likes to be dependent on someone else for their economic security so dependence can be on the government so you are not earning so you are dependent on the government to float your bills to pay your bills it can be on your parents it can be on your siblings or it can be on your children so goal of financial planning is to be financially independent not to depend on the government or not to depend on siblings or parents it also improves personal relationship because you're well planned so there was a recent article in which the major reason for breakdown of marriages is because of finances so if you are well planned you can avoid this reason of means this reason which leads to failed marriages so it improves personal relationship resulting from a well-planned and effectively communicated financial decisions. It increases a sense of freedom from financial worries obtained by looking to the future, anticipating expenses as an achieving. So this is very important. So you get a sense of freedom. You are not worried about paying your regular bills because you are already taken care of that. So you can actually do in life what you want. So you can go hiking, you can plan your tours, you can see this excellent world that we have. So all this is possible if you plan your finances well. So the process of financial planning is divided into steps. So step one is develop financial goals. So goals are something that you want in life and goals are in future. So you don't want it currently, but you want it after a certain lag of time. So how do we develop financial goals? So analyze your financial values and attitude towards money and what is your financial decision making process. So different people have different goals depending on their financial values and attitude towards money. So a risk taking individual may have very affluent goals, right? A conservative individual may have very non-affluent goals. So depending on your attitudes and values, your goals may differ. So first step is developing those financial goals. Where you want to be in life. So that's a very personal question and differs from person to person. Then determine your current financial situation. So this is where I want to be in life. And this is where I am in life. So it prepare a list of current assets and debt and amount you spend on various items. So it has three aspects. Current financial situations is classified into three. First is a budget. Budget is where you spend your exp where you spend and how you spend as well as where you get the income to spend it from. So it is divided into income and expenses and whatever left is savings. Savings can be utilized to achieving your financial goals. So income, expenses and spending. This is what the budget is all about. We are going to discuss it in future classes too. And the next is assets. Asset is something that you own. So it can be a car, it can be your house, it can be some stocks that you have bought. It means your bank balance, it means your liquid assets, it means your mutual funds. So whatever you own is called as asset. Whatever you owe to someone else is called as debt. So it can be obligations that you have taken from friends, financial obligations you have taken, money you have borrowed from friends, from family, from financial institutions like banks or credit institutions or it can be your credit card too. So you have to determine your budget, you have to determine your assets, you have to determine your liabilities or debt. Then identify alternative course of action. So now you know where you are, so current financial situation, where you want to be, the financial goals 
and how do you get there so there is a path from from getting from where you are to where you want to be in life so we develop different paths so this is alternative one this is alternative two this is alternative three okay so continue as you are expand or change your current situation or take a new course of action so these are possible alternative actions so continue as you are going because you determine that the way you are going the way you are saving you would be able to achieve what you want then it's okay or you determine that you need to save more so you take a different course of action or you are saving too high so you need to determine you need to spend a bit so that's a different course of action and then we evaluate alternatives so we developed alternatives now we see if we take this alternative what is the pros and cons of it if we take alternative 2 what are pros and cons of it so take into consideration your life situation personal values and current economic situations so let's say you decided in alternative one that you will invest in stock markets but you go and see that stock markets are currently overheated and there is a possibility of recession so it may not be a good time to get into stock markets so then you evaluate that alternative and change your decision opportunity cost is what you give up by making a choice so for example i determine that I need to save more to achieve my goal of getting married. So I need $100,000 for doing the marriage reception because my better half wants a lavish wedding. So for doing that, I determine that current saving patterns would not get me there. So I need to save more. So if I save more, the opportunity cost that I'm losing is spending that money. So I could have bought an additional I watch or an iPhone but I'm not doing that but I'm saving up for my marriage so not having an iPhone or an iWatch it's the opportunity cost there the cost referred to as trade-off of a decision can be measured in terms of money time or both so you may decide that you need a bachelor's degree in business to further your career now there are two alternatives you can either do it part-time or you can do it full-time so if you do full time, you are giving up some income, right? But you are giving additional time to it. If you do it part time, you get some income, but the time allocated will be less. So program may land up having more time. So it's an opportunity cost is determined in terms of time as well as money. Consider lost opportunities that will result from your financial decision and then evaluate the risk that you face. So evaluating your economic or product risk. So there are certain risks that these alternative or your investment face. So first can be interest rate risk. Interest rate risk. Interest rate is nothing but how much you pay when you borrow or how much you get when you invest in certain instruments. So if you are an investor, if you're getting a better interest rate, it means that you are going to get additional money, additional income. Right? But if you are a borrower, it means that if interest rates are going up, then you are going to pay additional money. So changing interest rates affects your cost when you borrow and your benefits when you invest. So you have to determine what are the interest rates in the market. You have to determine what is inflation. Inflation is something that eats away your money. For example, Let's say in 2018, a cup of Tim Hortons coffee in our college was costing, let's say, 8 bucks or 10 bucks. For simplicity, let's say 10 bucks or 10 dollars. In 2019, it is costing 15 dollars. So what has happened? For buying the same cup of coffee, you are paying more. Instead of paying 10 dollars, now you are paying 15 dollars or you are getting for $10 lesser coffee. This is inflation. Inflation increases your expenses because things get costlier. 
so what does it lead to rising prices cost lost of buying power because you have to pay more to get the same things that you are getting at a lesser cost then there is liquidity risk some investments may be more difficult to convert to cash or sell without significant loss of value liquidity means how easy it is to convert your investments into cash so the highest liquidity that you can ever get is holding cash because you don't need to convert okay now there are different alternatives let's say you have a savings account or a current account with a bank that can be easily converted into cash by withdrawing it through atm or withdrawing your money from any teller machines then there are certain instruments like real estate that may take certain time for you to sell those so liquidity is low it cannot be easily converted into cash or stocks that can be easily sold but you are not sure of the value that you are going to get you may get more money because the stock has appreciated or you may lose out certain money because stock has depreciated so liquidity means the instrument should be easily convertible into cash without loss of any value so high liquidity investments can be keeping cash keeping your money with banks specifically the current accounts or savings account so these are considered our money market mutual funds that we are going to discuss in further sessions so this can be considered as liquid investments illiquid investments can be stocks or real estate that are either hard to sell or you are not sure of losing value when you sell then there is certain product risk products or services are flawed or do not meet your expectations retailer may not oblig may, may not honor their obligations so this may be a cause of concern for you then there is risk of death premature death can cause financial hardship to a family because members left behind have to bear that risk for example if i am earning let's say Seventy thousand dollars a year because I am working as an accountant in a bank, and I have a I have recently got married and I have a small kid. Now, if I don't means if I don't come home this evening, so there are two types of uh, loss that the family would face. One would be emotional loss because the loved one is no more, and the second is financial loss. I had a certain income. That income was helping my family. if i am not there that income won't be there so premature death can cause a financial hardship and it has to be dealt with there can be a loss of income so you may lose your job or you may not be fit to do your job so a certain disability or certain accident may cause it health risk so poor health let's say you get some critical illness and you are not able to perform at your best so this may cost you some money because you are not earning as well as there are medical cost involved that may reduce your life expectancy then there is asset and liability risk assets may be stolen or damaged so your house may be damaged due to a flood or a hurricane and liability risk others may sue you for negligence or damages caused by your accident so you are driving a car you hit someone and he sues you so this is an liability risk so this is this was step 4 that is evaluate alternatives that is evaluate risk involved step 5 is now you know where you are you know where you want you have different alternatives you have covered all the risks that are involved with those alternatives as well as with your life now the you have created an plan and the point is where you implement it so choose ways of achieving your goal may require assistance from others so you may require an insurance broker for covering your risk you may require an investment firm to invest your money you may require a bank to you do your banking transactions so financial planning information sources so where do you get information from you can get information from printed material financial institution school courses and education seminar computer softwares internet and online information as well as financial specialist and it's a process financial planning is always a process there is no end to it 
So once you create a plan, you need to reevaluate it and revise your plan. So let's say you had created a plan of retirement. You had a retirement plan in process whereby you are saving for your retirement because after retirement you won't be working and there won't be any income source. So you need to build sufficient investments to cover your retirement. And all of a sudden you get an inheritance from somewhere or you win a lottery. So this would change your plan. You may either start saving less towards retirement and allocate that lottery saving towards retirement or do something else. So personal situations may change as well as external situations may change. You had invested a lot of money with stocks in stocks and the stock market had a big crash. So this changes a lot of things. So internal or external factors may change and you may have to reevaluate and revise your plan. So the first step now, financial goals. Now financial goals are influenced by a lot of factors. We have discussed personal values and attitudes. So different people have different attitudes towards money. Some like spending, some are very conservative about spending. So depending on that, you may design the goals. Time frame in, you want, in which you want to achieve your goals. This is very interesting. So I'll give you two goals and I'll pause a while because then we'll discuss will my approach of planning for these goals would be same. So the first goal is getting married in one year. So I have to get married in one year. I need $100,000 for a lavish wedding. This is my goal one. Goal two is to have $1 million when I retire, which is 40 years from now. So will my approach be same towards both the goals? Would my, in, would my investments be same for achieving both the goals. Think about it. So the answer is no. I have very less time to achieve my goal one. That is one year. So I may not be able to take any risk on it. For example, if I invest for this goal in stock markets. So what would happen? Either I would get married very lavishly because I get very good returns or I lose value and my goal of getting married at $100,000 may not fulfill, may not be fruitful. But the other goal that is 40 years from now has a lot of time involved. So even though stock markets don't give me return this year, I can wait on my investments to achieve my goal. So time is a very important factor. Lesser time you have, lesser risk you can take. More time you have, more risk you can take. Type of financial need that drives your goal. So financial needs can be different. It can be a lump sum amount that you require. It can be regular amount that you require from your goal, for your goal. So depending on that, your goals may change. Your life situation. If your life, if you have a lot of assets, you can plan different goals. If you have a lot of savings, you can plan your different goals. If you have a steady source of income, you can plan different goals. But if you have low assets, if you have low savings, if you have, if you don't have a steady source of income, then planning for goals becomes a bit tricky because first you need to cover that situation that you are in and then for plan for your future goals. So factors that influence your financial goals can be timing of goals. So short term, intermediate or long term. So short term will be one or two years. Intermediate will be two to five years. Anything beyond five years is generally considered long term. Goals for different financial needs. For example, you can have goals of consumable product goals like buying a new I watch or buying something by means related to your groceries, have enough money to buy groceries, durable products, cars, sporting equipment. So buying a sporting bike would be your goal. So life situations take into consideration different personal factors. 
सो एज इनकम मैरिटल स्टेटस हाउस होल्ड साइज पर्सनल बेनिफिट्स एंड एम्प्लॉयमेंट सिचुएशन सो यू हैव टू वेन एवर यू आर प्लानिंग योर गोल्स यू हैव टू कंसिडर ऑल ऑफ दिस इन्फ्लुएंस योर स्पेंडिंग एंड सेविंग पैटर्नस सो लाइफ सिचुएशंस इन्फ्लुएंस योर सेविंग पैटर्नस एज वेल एज योर स्पेंडिंग पैटर्नस वेन यू आर यंग यू टेंड टू स्पेंड मोर आफ्टर फ्यू ईयर्स वेन यू आर near your retirement you become more wise and you tend to spend less it may not be applicable to each and every case but this is the general assumption as society changes different type of financial needs evolve so when you get married your goal changes so currently there are different social means trends that are happening so first is we are getting married at a later age so the entire demographics is shifting so getting married at later age has certain advantages you have more time to build your own assets you have more time to st- start thinking about family but it has certain disadvantages too because by the time you are your kids are of the age of edu- means uh, of the age of university education you are already on the threshold of retiring so you may not have money to spend for their education more households with two income so this has been a significant change so we are able to spend more today than we were in past because more and more households are having double income so both the spouse means both the partners are working so it helps there are a lot of single parents now so single parents has its own perks and quirks so you need to plan for single parents differently we are living longer so life expectancy is increasing each year and we are a sandwich generation so the sandwich generation is where you have to care for your children as well as you have to care for your aging parents too so if you are caught in sandwich generation it becomes a little bit trickier because on one hand you have to take care of your parents aging parents in terms of their needs and then you have your children that are going up so you need to take care of them so average person goes through four basic stages in personal financial management it is referred to life cycle approach to financial planning so this is just an average it may not apply to each and every situation so early years until mid 30s focus on creating emergency fund so your goal is to create an emergency fund saving for down payment on house or condo so you are planning to buy your first house purchasing life insurance because buying life insurance during this age is recommended because the premiums are lower and you can attract means you can contract for a longer duration so you may not be end may, may not end with paying higher premiums in later stage and you need to start think about retirement because earlier you plan your retirement better it is time is your greatest asset in terms of planning for retirement or in terms of long term goals so it's not about how much you save it is about how long do you save so time is a very great asset that helps us so middle years that is mid 30s to mid 50s focus on building wealth by paying down your mortgage so you build up your home equity you pay off the mortgage that you have taken and increase your savings and investment middle years that is 50 plus focus is on providing an adequate retirement fund because you are on the threshold of retiring retirement years focus is on efficient management of previously acquired wealth so if you see you are young you are earning and you retire you stop earning so what do we do is during the span of being young till the retirement age that is the vesting age you try to build your assets you try to build your investments once you have sufficient investments then in the retirement years you live off those investments there is certain help that is provided by the government there is certain help that is provided by your workplace because of the retirement plans that you have but the rest of it you have to manage through your investments 
but in the retirement age until and unless you do some kind of part time work or some time of full full time work or you have your own business your income stops so that's a big change that you have to deal with so there are certain other events that influence your life situation it may involve graduation it may involve engagement and marriage it may involve birth or adoption of a child so child is a big change career change or move to a new area so the financial goals may change dependent children's leaving your home so you have more space so you can plan certain things with it divorce retirement death of a spouse or a family member so all these internal factors may change that may impact your goals common financial goals and activities include obtaining a proper career so devising your own career so it depends on what you like to do how you want to go through your life different stages different career options so obtaining a proper career training that is education create an effective financial record keeping system create a proper budget so you should know what you are getting that is income and you know you should know where you are spending that is the expenses on needs as well as wants develop a regular saving and investment program accumulate appropriate emergency funds because you may know may you may not know what would happen so you need to plan for contingencies so it's best to have an emergency fund purchase appropriate types and amount of insurance coverage so life insurance that covers your life disability insurance that pays you when you have certain disabilities health insurance as well as property insurance you have a house you have a car you have to protect that create and implement a flexible budget evaluate and select appropriate investments for achieving those goals establish and implement a plan for retirement goals so you need to plan for your retirement too now after your retirement once you pass off you pass on your assets so when you pass on your assets there are certain taxes that the either siblings has to give or you have to give when you pass your assets to your uh, the nominees okay you are passing your assets to your nominees so either you are taxed or the nominees are taxed so you need to plan for that so you need to have a will so who are the nominees how much do they get and you need to consider the taxes and create a proper estate plan so make a will and develop an estate plan that is also a goal so life situations and specialized financial activities depending on life so if you are young 18 to 35 establish financial independence move out of your parents house start living on your own start means start getting independent obtain disability insurance to replace income during prolonged illness if you acquire anything consider house purchases plan your education all this could be goals when you are young young couple with children under 18 carefully manage increased need of credit and use of credit obtain an appropriate amount of life insurance for care of dependents use a will to name a guardian for children single parent with children under 18 obtain adequate amount of health life and disability insurance contribute to saving and investment funds for children's higher education so your education in dance is done you are at a certain stage in your life and you need to you plan to help your kids get university education so you need to plan for that name a guardian for children and make other estate plans young dual income couple no children coordinate insurance cover and other benefits develop saving and investment program for changes in life situations you want larger house you are planning for kids consider tax deferred contribution to retirement so plan your retirement we'll consider what is tax deferred and all we'll discuss about it so older couple no dependent children consolidate financial assets so have a view of all your financial assets review your estate plans obtain health insurance 
that's very crucial because there are over the counter expenses and out of pocket expenses that you need to plan for planned retirement housing living expenses recreational activities and part time work if you are going to do something voluntary work if you are planning to do something mixed generation so sandwich generation you have elderly individuals and children obtain long term health insurance and coverage for taking care of younger dependents use dependent care services for elderly provide arrangement for handling finances of elderly consider splitting investments cost with elderly getting income while alive and principal going to surviving relatives so you need to plan for all of that if you're older and single make arrangement for long term health care review will and estate plan plan retirement living facilities living expenses and activities so this is interesting so these are common financial goals now whenever you are designing financial goals financial goals need to be smart so they should be specific they should be measurable they should be realistic they should have a time frame so specific measurable attainable realistic and time bound so actionable sorry not attainable actionable so specific measurable attainable or actionable realistic and time bound so smart so each goal needs to be smart so buying a car this is not a smart goal it's not specific which car you want how much you need to spend it's not measurable how much you need to spend it's not actionable right how do you want to get it in how many years you want to get it it may not be realistic so buying a sports car that is costing let's say half a million dollars may not be realistic according to your life situation and it may not be time bound so you need to devise goals that are smart you, when planning for goals try to have them smart so along with internal factors external factors also affect you so whatever is happening outside you in the economy in the markets it also impacts you right it impacts your investment it impacts your income it impacts your expenses so it impacts your income it impacts your expenses it impacts your assets investments and it impacts your loans too so something that impacts you market forces supply and demand so it maybe it impacts your job so you're into a workforce or a business that is dependent on supply of let's say aluminum so us decides to tax canadian aluminum as well as steel so demand for canadian aluminum and steel goes down in demand for us steel and aluminum goes up so the industry that is uh, businesses that are working in steel and aluminum in canada may have lesser demand so may, it may have some job attrition it may have some business losses so if you are working in this industry or owning a business you are impacted by demand and supply production cost and competition so you were have let's say you recently immigrated to canada you are coming from vietnam and you have a vietnamese restaurant and soon you because you were in you were niche because there was no vietnamese restaurant around you were doing well but then a lot of vietnamese other people from vietnam came in they started their restaurant so you are getting competition not only from local restaurants but the niche that you were pro providing the vietnamese food you are getting competition there so it impacts financial it impacts your income financial institutions so bank of canada controls the interest rates in the market so it either increases the interest rates or it decreases the interest rates so if it increases what are the implications on your investment what are the implications on your saving same way when it decreases what are your implications on investments and save as well as loans you have to determine that global influences level of exports foreign investors competition so let's say you're staying in vancouver and there is lot of uh, foreign pressure on foreign buying pressure on houses 
so a lot of foreign investors are investing in real estate in vancouver so the prices are going up so your affordability gets impacted due to that so all these changes you have to factor in different economic conditions are we going are is there any possibility of recession happening is there possibility of good times coming in the economy how is the globe doing how are other countries doing how is canadian economy doing so all this impacts you inflation inflation is rise in price levels so if we have in if we increase in inflation so your purchasing power goes down if we decrease if the inflation rate goes down your purchasing power goes up so it depends for example canada has an inflation rate of around 2.1% last year maybe it would be around 1.5 1.6% so inflation is going up so how does it impact you it your purchasing power is going down so you have to pay more for the same goods and services that you were buying at a lesser cost it impacts your investment it impacts your savings so all this you have to factor in so consumer prices is value of dollar so changes in inflation mainly caused by increase in demand without increase in supply harmful to people on fixed income so if your income is not moving according to inflation you are impacted can adversely affect people who lend money so if you are a lender then it impacts you because the payments that people are going to make will have lesser value i'll give you an example i gave out 1000 dollars loan to my friend and each year he had to make 10 he had to make a payment of 100 dollars on it but because inflation is increasing each year each year when he pays 100 dollars that is of lesser value to me because goods and services that i was buying from that 100 dollars are costing more now so as a debt holder if inflation is increasing the real value of payments that you are getting from your debt from your obligations is getting lesser and lesser consumer spending is total demand of goods and services in an economy so demand of goods and services by individuals and household influence employment opportunity so if economy is doing well generally the consumer spending is high so if consumer spending is high there are a lot of opportunities in the market but in recession consumer spending drops so you need to factor in that interest rates so we have talked about it it is cost of money cost of credit when you borrow borrowing increases demand and so interest rates are a function of demand and supply so if there is lot of demand for funds so interest rates would go down go up but if there is lesser demand for funds interest rates will go down return on your money when you save or invest it also depends on the interest rates saving and investment investing increases the supply of money and interest rates decrease so when lot of people are saving when saving rates are going up banks have lot of money the lending system has lot of money so that's why they will charge lesser interest but if supply is decreasing and demand is increasing then they will charge higher interest so money supply also influences you so dollar available for spending in your economy unemployment rate influences you how much is the unemployment rate for example we are going through a period of very low un- unemployment rate in both states and canada unemployment rates are at decade low levels right now so how does it impact you so there are more opportunities available for you you the job change changing becomes more much more easier so number of people without employment who are willing and able to work that is nothing but unemployment rate housing starts so what are the number of houses being built so if lot of houses are being built like what happened in china especially with the outskirts not the major cities but the outskirts cities entire two cities lot of construction happened so there was lot of supply of houses so that impacts the cost of houses gross domestic product the value of goods and services produced within a country's border including i so gdp is nothing but the total transactions that are happening in our geography so transactions includes goods services and financial assets 
So production and consumption that is happening for goods, services and financial assets in our country in a year is called as GDP. So if GDP rate goes up, more goods are produced, more services are delivered and more financial assets are traded. So that is good for economy because more goods means more job opportunities, more employment, etc. As when the GDP goes down, lesser goods are produced and consumed, lesser good, lesser services are delivered as well as lesser financial assets are bought and sold. So that impacts you. So if GDP rates are going up, that's good. GDP rates going down, that's a concern for you. Trade balance, how much is government spending versus how much is government's income? So government gets income from taxes as well as from the services that it offers and it uses those taxes on different things like infrastructure, defense, then other services like healthcare and social security that it offers. So if your spending is more than in your, your income, then you have an imbalance. So that is called as fiscal balance fiscal deficit trade deficit is when you are importing and exporting and when you are importing more than your exports you have a deficit if your exports are more than your imports you have a surplus so difference between countries exports and its imports is called as trade balance fiscal balance is difference between government spending and government income so both these things fiscal balance as well as trade balance impacts you then what is the stock how is the stock market doing so this would of course impact you if you are an investor in stocks so opportunity cost and time value of money in financial decisions you end up sacrificing one thing in favor of another we have discussed about it these opportunity costs can be viewed in terms of both personal and financial resources Personal opportunity cost includes time. So when you prioritize one activity over the other, you end up spending time towards it, which you could have done for something else. Example, use time to meet needs, achieve goals and satisfy personal values. So you have to juggle between things. Health. So poor eating habits, lack of sleep, exercise can result in a time away from work or school increase health cost and reduce financial security. So bottom line is to exercise. Financial opportunity cost is something called as time value of money. So consider the time value of money increase in an amount of money as a result of interest earned. So when you spend, save or invest, you should consider the time value of money as an opportunity cost. I'll give you an example. So if you're earning $100 right now, one option is to spend $100 right away or another option is to invest that $100 today so that you can get that $100 back after one year. Now if you spend $100 right now, then you lose on the opportunity to earn interest on that $100. You can invest that $100, let's say at 5% interest rate, one year down the line you will get $105. So you're losing on that. So financial opportunity cost, setting aside funds in savings plans with little or no risk has an opportunity cost of potentially higher returns from an investment with greater risk. So that's always true. So if you have $100 to invest in, either you can choose Apple stock, that is little bit riskier, but can give you good returns. But, or you can choose something safe like a bank deposit in that case you would have to you would get certain lower cost having extra money withheld from your paycheck in order to receive a tax refund has an opportunity cost of lost interest the money could earn in a savings account so if you're if you're waiting for some tax refunds instead of utilizing that money right now then it has an opportunity cost involved same way many, making annual deposits in a retirement account can help you avoid the opportunity cost of having inadequate funds later in life 
purchasing a new automobile or a home appliance has a potential benefit of saving you money on future maintenance and energy cost so next is a concept of simple interest so interest compounded on principal excluding previously earned interest so the idea of simple interest is if you are investing hundred dollars and the interest rate is 10 percent so at the year end you will get ten dollars in interest how hundred dollars multiplied by ten percent gives you ten dollars now if you invest that hundred dollars for two years in a simple interest instrument so it will be hundred dollars multiplied by ten percent into two that is you will get twenty dollars so thing that is happening please note the interest that you got in year one is not reinvested when you consider simple interest so it's like investing hundred dollars at the end you will get hundred and ten dollars withdraw that money again invest hundred dollars next year at the beginning and you will get ten dollars again so interest doesn't compound so you don't get interest on interest in simple interest so they have given an example five hundred dollars at two percent interest rate gives you ten dollars in one year you will have it should be not 110 it should be 510 so there is a small error in the slide now compound interest is a bit different so let's take the same example again so this is also 510 not 500 so what is happening i'll explain to you so in compound interest interest is earned on the previous interest amount so it's like whatever gain you're making in that investment that is reinvested into it so example if $500 is getting you 2% in year 1 you will end up with $510 in year 2 you'll get interest on this entire $510 not the original 500 so year 2 it will be 510 multiplied by 2% that gives you 520.20 so this additional 20 20 cents that is visible it is because of interest on interest same way third year you will get 530.60 this additional 60 cents is because of interest on interest now you can see as the time proceeds this creates a large difference in terms of simple interest and compound interest so more time involved higher would be the end amount due to compounding rather than simple interest now to give you a real life example so simple interest and compound interest simple interest is you invest in apple stock at hundred dollars at the year end the stock is at hundred and ten dollars so what do you do you remove that ten dollars interest so again keep the hundred dollars invested and wait for the next year's return okay so you keep on selling apple stocks worth of interest amount that's very impractical in compound interest you keep that interest amount invested so whatever the share has appreciated you do not sell that difference amount so if you're buying apple in terms of compounded interest and it is giving 10 percent interest rate so 100 dollars apple stock becomes 110 dollars 121 dollars and so on and so forth so you are reinvesting the interest too so you're not withdrawing money each year from apple you're not selling apple stocks worth the interest amount you have earned each year and that's much more practical that is what we do the key features of future value of a single amount and a series of deposits includes the following so we are discussing about future value future value is nothing but the amount to which the current saving will rise based on certain interest and time period and future value calculations involve compounding they do not consider simple interest in most of the cases so there is in next video i would be covering how time value of money works and few examples so we'll discuss more about it in the next video too 
so calculations involve compounding since interest is earned on the previous earned interest can be computed for a single amount or a series of deposits so imagine if you have hundred dollars invested in year one at a 10 percent interest rate so future value will be like if you keep that invested for five years you would end up with a value that is greater than 100. So finding that amount is future value calculation. So you make one investment, wait for a certain time and there is interest. So that value increases in future. So that future value is called as future value computation. Other way to look at it is if you make regular payments, regular investment of the same dollar amount in an instrument, and wait for a certain year how much will that value turn out to be example if you invest hundred dollars each year for the next five years how much would you get certainly it would be more than five hundred dollars that you have invested because there is interest rate involved so you can calculate future value from a single payment or from a series of payment now, when you're calculating for a series of payment, you have to be careful about two points. One, it has to be same amount that you are investing and the frequency should be same. So if you're investing yearly, each year you should invest the same amount. If you're investing monthly, each month you should invest the same amount. Then you can use future value computation of an annuity. So annuity is a series of equal deposits or payment at equal frequencies. So the key point is start investing now to take advantage of future value of money. So I've, we've discussed in the previous class and we will discuss in, in future classes too. Why time is your greatest assets? Same way there is present value. Present value is if you are going to get X amount in future, how much should you invest today to make that X amount? Example, let's say I need $50,000 to buy Tesla in next five years. So how much should I invest right now in a mutual fund giving me 5% interest? So that current value is nothing but present value calculation. Now if you draw a timeline, if you go in future, you are calculating future value. If you come to present or go in past, you are calculating present value. So the current value of future amount based on a certain interest rate and a certain time period is called as present value. The present value calculations are also called as discounting. So remember future value calculations are called as compounding present value calculations are called as discounting it allows you to determine how much deposit you should make right now to get the future desired amount it can be computed for a single amount or it can be computed for a series of deposit so same way you can calculate it for one single payment or a series of payments so the we have covered an example for example hundred dollars deposited in a two percent account for two years will grow to one zero four point zero four so hundred dollars right gets two percent interest so it becomes hundred and two this hundred and two is again reinvested becomes hundred and four point zero four so interest on interest So this is how you use the financial calculator. So financial calculator has five inputs N, I, PV, PMT and FV. So these are five inputs. Compute function is to calculate. Okay. So it has five inputs. N is for number of periods. I slash Y. The first I stands for interest rates. Y stands for frequency of compounding for the time being we'll not get into frequency of compounding we'll just focus on interest rate pv stands for present value current value pmt stands for payments and fv stands for future value 
in the next class we would be discussing about time value of money in greater details but i'm just giving you a brief overview here so johnny has two children so we'll be starting post secondary education in 10 years so what is period n 10 so you can you need to input 10 in your financial calculators she plans to set aside $1,500 for her children education during that period and estimates she will earn an annual interest of 5% per annum. What amount can Johnny expect to be available to her for children's post-secondary education when they are ready to enroll? So what is key important point? She is investing $1,500. Is she making a one-time payment? The answer is no. The statement is 1500 a year. So each year she is investing 1500. So PV is zero. There is no one time payment. PV present value is one time payment. But PMT that is payments, regular payments is 1500. Now we follow a sign convention. If you are investing, it's money is moving out of your account so it's negative if you're getting money is come to coming to your account so it is positive so 1500 would be negative so fill in all this data n is 10 interest rate is 5 percent pv is 0 pmt is 1500 and compute fv so fv comes to be 18,866.84 so they are calculating PV now. They are calculating PM. Let's say Dawn wants to accumulate fifty thousand over the next ten years as a reserve fund for its pay for his parents' retirement, living expenses, and healthcare. So he wants fifteen thousand fifty thousand dollars in next ten years. If he earns an eight percent interest rate, what amount must he invest each year? Now again, important point: Are they asking you to make a one-time deposit? No. They are asking you how much should you invest each year to get that amount. So N is 10, interest rate is 8%, PV is 0 in your calculator and press compute and PMT. So you will get value of 3451. The other method is the table method. So there is a present value factor that the table, I'll show you the table in the next class how it works. Or in this annexure there is a table so I'll show you that so you need to mark that table entry find out the factor and just divide by it if you're calculating present value and multiply it if you're calculating future value in the previous case so present value discounting is the current value of future amount based on a certain interest rate and a certain time period if you have if you want $300 seven years from now and you're you're saving on 10% interest rate compounded semi-annually that is 5% for seven years means 5% for 14 semi-annual periods find out how much you would need so 300 is divided by 1 plus 0 0.05 to the power 4 or you can calculate it on your calculator too. In the next class, we'll discuss much more detail. What are the formulas? What are the methods of calculating time value? So if it is a series of deposits, still you can calculate PV. So if you want to withdraw $100 at the end of each year for 10 years, how much you should invest? So $100 is PMT and is 10 interest rate is 14% and future value is zero and you're computing pv so you need to invest 521 dollars today to make 10 payments of 100 dollars each so these are the things that we are going to cover across different units so components of financial planning include obtaining so you work hard you get money so either you work hard in your job, you work hard on your business or you work hard on your investments. So three sources give you money. You plan your goals. You plan what you want to do. You save for achieving those goals. Sometimes you borrow to achieve those goals 
and you spend then there are certain risk involved so you need to manage those risks we'll talk about it and the saving needs to be converted to investments so instead of just saving money in your savings account you can get a little higher interest rates when you invest it so how do you convert those savings into investments for achieving your goals that's part of investing finally everyone has to retire no one can work infinitely maybe you are working in a business but your health may not permit you to continue doing that so retirement is a big question that everyone needs to answer so how do you plan for that and same way you need to pass off your assets so how do you plan for estate planning so this is how we are going to cover it so obtaining is covered in unit 1 planning unit 2 and 3 savings 4 borrowing 5 and 6 spending 7 risk is how do you control risk 8 and 9 investing 10 to 13 and retirement is 14 to 15 so this is how you go you obtain your money you plan for it this is the financial planning cycle personal financial planning cycle so you obtain your money you plan for your goals you save for your goals you consider your debt you consider your borrowing you have a spending plan so you cannot have spending more than what you are earning because then you are eroding your investment so you need to have a proper spending plan you need to manage your risk you need to convert your savings into investments to achieve your goals and you need to plan for retirement and estate planning so these are components of financial planning so what is a financial plan it contains all of this it contains details about obtaining your funds not help regarding it but details about it your current financial situation how what are your goals how are you going to plan it how are what is your saving plan what is your income how much is your spending and what is being saved and how do you control it through a budget borrowing spending managing risk investing and retirement and estate planning so a financial plan is a formalized report that summarizes your current situation analyzes your needs and recommends future financial activities so three things where you want to be where you are and how do you get there your financial plans can be created by you done with an assistant from a financial planner or made using softwares so achieving financial goals a big part of it is discipline a lot of people have talent but very few have the discipline to work on that talent so same way financial planning is all about discipline so develop good financial habits use a spending plan that is a budget how much you are earning how much is your expense and how much are you saving first find out that a lot of people don't know how much they are spending and where they are spending so regularly monitor your spending habits to know exactly where you are spending this helps to develop conscious of where you are spending and you would be surprised for example I found out recently that I am drinking coffee worth of $400 a month because I was eating it because I was drinking it all the time outside. So I decided to get a coffee maker to get my own coffee when I travel and it is saving me a lot of money. So these small things matter a lot. So use a spending plan to stay within your income allow you to save and invest for the future. Have appropriate insurance protection to prevent through financial disaster. So cover yourself. Anything can happen. So plan for contingencies. Become informed about tax and investment alternatives. Be an informed investor, not a dumb investor. Achieve your financial objectives requires a willingness to earn, learn. So learning is part of the game. You need to keep on learning because things are changing so fast and appropriate information sources.
so this is the example that they have uh, taken from the book so it's ex similar to where you are right what you want to do in one year and what you want to do from more than a year so they have given an example you can just glance through it in the book because it's not very readable on the slides next once you have an financial plan you need to implement it so the most important strategy for success in development of financial habits that contribute to both short term satisfaction and long term satisfaction is using a well convinced spending plan helps you stay within your income the main source of financial difficulties is overspending i cannot stress the fact any much more means it's very important you have to spend within your means having appropriate insurance protection helps you prevent financial disasters so why do we take so much debt means if you see canada canada is a debt ridden society so per capita debt is over our income right now the federal debt federal debt is also in deficits so why are we having so much deficits because we are overspending we are overspending as an individual we are overspending as a province and we are overspending as a country that's why we have deficits at a personal level we have lot of debt we have deficits at provincial level most of the provinces except a few and we have deficits at federal level 20 billion dollars of deficit last year that is i'm talking about 2017 2018 having appropriate in okay so we have discussed about analyzing the process of personal financial decision determining current financial situation developing financial goals identifying alternative course of actions evaluating alternatives create and implement a financial plan and reevaluate and revise the financial plan so these are steps that are going to there developing financial goals goals should be smart so specific realistic attainable or achievable measurable and town time bound have a time frame indicate type of action access economic factors how inflation is impacting you interest rates are impacting you employment opportunities that are being generated example if nafta closes down how will it impact you are you working in something related to nafta so if nafta doesn't work out between united states canada and mexico what are the alternatives you need to do do you need to do certain reskilling how is auto automation going to impact you 73% of uh, citizens right now don't fear automation they say it's going to be big part but they don't say that their jobs are going to change whether it would be true so you need to factor in all of this determine personal and financial opportunity cost so personal opportunity cost time effort and health financial opportunity cost based on time value of money future and present value calculations we are going to cover it in next class so in the next session identify strategies for achieving personal financial goals for different life situations so require specific goals combined with spending saving investing and borrowing strategies based on your personal life situation and various social and economic factors so you need to incorporate what is internal and you need to incorporate what is the external environment into a financial strategy so where do you get informations from so you can scan for periodicals so cpa has a nice periodical money matters has no has lot of nice periodicals you can check with financial institutions you can attend courses and seminars for increasing your knowledge financial planning softwares are there spreadsheets money management and financial planning programs tax software investment analysis software and you can search on the internet too so these are financial planning specialists that work in this domain so accountants are responsible for your accounting needs as well as certain aspects of taxation 
Bankers provide you with banking needs, so transactional needs. Credit counselors work on decreasing your credit to achieving a credit free life. So if you are bad in terms of credit in your life, if you have too much debt, they are the best people to approach. Certified financial planners is an overarching person. So he incorporates all these aspects that are there. So he may be a mediator. So it's, he's like a one stop financial solution for you who coordinates with these other people. Insurance agents and brokers are responsible for life insurance, about disability insurance, any kind of insurance you need. Investment brokers give you an opportunity to, to invest through them in stocks in mutual funds, etc. Lawyers are responsible for drafting your wills in terms of financial planning. I'm not talking in general, but lawyers are responsible for drafting your wills as well as certain tax litigations that you may face as an individual or your clients may face. Real estate agents are responsible for buying and selling of properties. And there are then tax preparers who exclusively work to prepare your tax account. So financial planners in our society or throughout the world work in three different ways. So fee only financial planners. So they charge an hourly fee, which can be means to give you a perspective. It can be around $75 to $200 per hour. Or they can charge you fees per plan, $500 to $2,000 per plan. So they are working only on fees. There are fee and commission planners. So they work on fees as well as they get commissions when they sell you products. So it can be a mutual fund. It can be an insurance policy. So the company that is originating, that is the producer of that investment or producer of that insurance policy gives them certain commissions based on their sales. And there are commission only planners. So planning is secondary. The main income source for them is commissions that they get when they prescribe you certain products. So whenever you are working in this industry, you need to be clear of where what you are, you need to disclose it to the client. And if you are cl a client, you need to ask the financial planner, how does he earn whether he earns through fees, through fees and commission or through commission. Do you need a financial planner? It's based on your income. So Grossly, if you have an income less than $40,000, you don't need basically a financial planner because the income is little on the uh, south side. So you can manage your own business means own personal finance. If you are earning over $40,000, then you can think about financial planning. The more complex your situation is, it makes more it much more relevant to go to a financial planner. And then are you willing to make your own decisions or do you like to outsource that job to someone else who would take those decisions for you? So it depends on that too. So this is end of chapter one. So I have just covered the book review. I have given you my perspective on things and help you to go through this slide. In the next class, in the next session, we'll talk about time value of money. This is related to chapter one. So chapter one, I have given you book review in the next session. We'll be covering chapter one time value of money.